Okay, the guys asked me to talk a little bit about torque converters. There's a real science behind torque converters and I always get a lot of questions. People ask me, well, if I get a 5,000 stall, does that mean the car? I says, no, 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 no. One of the myths is on a stall converter, people don't think the car moves until it hits its peak stall. That's, that's not true. Is what the converter does is it helps transfer the power from the motor to the transmission, from the transmission to the rear end to get the car motivated. A lot of times, guys don't have enough converter. They have too much converter. The GTO, for example. The GTO, the camshaft they picked in it, say starts making power at 2200, 22 to 65. So when we picked the converter for that, we had a custom converter built. I can't remember all the specs. I, I go through so many converters, but we look at the weight of the car, the gear ratio, the size of the tire, the power range of the camshafts, very important. Sometimes compression ratio, uh, naturally aspirated, how big the carburetor is. This converter here is out of a dragster, 565 cubic inch, naturally aspirated on alcohol. Uh, this converter stalls out at 5800. The car will move before 5800. Is what the converter actually does is it slips multiplies the power and the torque and helps shoot the car out but the converter is locked up at 5800. I'm trying to explain this so yeah. your normal so person understands. Converting. Really. Yeah, yeah. Um, we're in Niagara Falls. Niagara Falls has a ton of hot rods here. Sunday nights out on the lane sometimes is it's like the old American graffiti days. Uh, I know a couple guys that are out there with a 1,000, 1,200 horse in their streetcars. Um, the problem with going to a lot of stall in a streetcar is it will generate a lot of heat. If you're cruising out on the street and you got a 5,000 stall converter and you're putting around town at your engine's running at 2,000, 3,000 RPM. You're actually, I don't want to say driving through the converter, but the converter is actually slipping. It's not completely locked up, so you're going to generate a lot of heat in your transmission fluid. You could definitely prematurely hurt your transmission or burn it up. You'll actually, because the converter's not locked up, you'll actually drive through the clutch plates in, in the transmission. This is why it's very important to really look at all your specs and order the right converter for the right job. When you're talking about your rear end ratios, again, the, having the right ratio in the rear is like having the right converter. Uh, the ratio in the rear will definitely affect the way the converter stalls because it's how hard you're loading it up. When you're driving down the street, it's like getting on your 10-speed bicycle. Put it in 10th speed and try and take off from a stop. See how much energy you're using. Put it in first gear. See how much energy you use to go from me to you. Very little. And it all depends what you're doing with your vehicle too. How much highway driving you're doing. Uh, if you go to cruise nights or whatever. There's, you know, guys will go from the falls to the one in Grimsby. Stuff like that. That's where your overdrive trainings and stuff come into effect. I had a customer with a 66 big block Chevelle. I think 373's in it, had a 28 inch tall tire. He would be 32, 3500 from here to Grimsby. We ended up taking the trainee out and I converted the car over to a 700 R4 with the lockup module. Well, you take it down the highway 70 miles an hour, the thing's running at 2200 RPM but you still have your same performance in your, your lower gears. A lot of people, they spend all the money on the engine and they forget about the rest of the package. 
you gotta it's like baking a cake everything's got to be everything's got to be good everything's got to be matching right the converter is definitely the key i've had guys i've had guys that we've done transmissions for i ask them about their converter oh no the converter's good they take it to the track i'm there i'm watching and the car's a turd out of the starting line car gets out 100 foot it's like somebody kicks it in the butt all of a sudden it starts taking off it's the wrong converter for the application i've worked i've got a place in the states that builds all my converters custom to my specifications i've had customers only only change the converter and the car picks up three four five tenths that's that's huge hmm. it's huge it's it's a science that's got to be right. If I have a customer comes in and they want a converter for their application, I fill out a spec sheet. We go cubic inch, carburation, cylinder head, camshaft specs, weight of the car, gear ratio, size of the tire. And when that converter is built, it's, it's the ticket. I've never had to take one, have it recut, and tweaked. It's, it's a perfect piece. When you're working on your project, your hot rod, it doesn't matter if it's your diesel truck or whatever, you make sure you have everything figured out before you buy your converter. If it's just like a street application and it's mild and everything, you know, you could buy a converter for three, four, five hundred bucks. This particular converter, custom built for a 565 dragster on alcohol, this is an eighteen hundred dollar torque converter. You know, it's the same with the same with your diesel trucks. When we do the Dodge Cummings diesels or the the Fords with the four R one hundreds power stroke, we always get our converters custom built with a rear billeted cover. Because, you know, you got your lockup in there. The lockup generates a lot of heat, distorts the factory covers, takes the clutch out. So when you're redoing it, you want to try and make it the best you can make it. You don't, you don't spend all the money building it and then putting a cheap converter in it, for sure.